now welcome back volleyball fans to the NVA 2022. This is event number one from San Bernardino. My Matt Prosser joined by special guest commentator coach Justin Beaumont from Team Freedom. We're getting ready for our final match of the weekend. The Inland Empire Matadors, kind of the home team, taking on the Las Vegas Ramblers here. Getting ready to start at 6 p.m. local time. Coach Beaumont, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. What are you looking forward the most to seeing in this match? Well, the Matadors had an interesting lineup yesterday with like only one middle, and they were kind of doing this split pin thing with the setter setting from the middle. I don't think that's going to work too well against this team with Antoine in the middle there. Um, so I'm, I'm curious to see what they do with that. Ramblers are so strong from the middle, and, and then Mathers on the right side. So I'm just excited to see some good volleyball, and, and I hope these guys come out and, and ball for this last match. Yeah, absolutely. The, uh, again, home team in the Inland Empire Matadors losing last night and looking for some redemption in tonight's match. Meanwhile, the Ramblers did win their first match on Friday, although you're gonna see some different faces on the team. A new setter coming in as they lost setter Tanner Maxwell to some previous obligations. Tonight's setter will be Spencer Andrews. Not really sure what to expect from him, but also expect to see action from middles Antoine Aguilar, like you said, Josh Duarte, really, the key players for the Ramblers are going to be Ryan Mather, the opposite hitter, and outside hitter Jordan Hoppy. Yeah. Let's yeah. not forget about uh, Nick England, of course. Sure. He, shout out to Nick England. I mean, I'm sitting in his chair right now, and it is warm. I am glad he, uh, he kept it warm for me because I'm feeling some heavy shoes here. Meanwhile, though, for the Matadors, it is good to point out that they did get a middle blocker back. So last night they were only having Patrice in the middle. But tonight they have Brett Massetti, oh, who was help. missing last night. So yeah. perhaps that'll be Perfect. you know, yeah, a nice sure. fill-in to what you were talking about previously there. Coach. Yeah, because they can play. I mean, they have, they have some serious skills, some high-flying guys. And I think uh, if they play that fast tempo, I think it could cause some trouble for the Matadors. I'm excited to see it. Well, a couple of keys, I think, for sure, has got to be their serve reception. Yeah. Right? We've seen all weekend long the teams that put on pressure from the inline, yeah. right, that can take their opponent out of system, right, has really paid dividends for them. Can you kind of speak on that for us a little bit? Yeah, I mean, this league is made up of so many good passers. Like, there's good passers in this league. There's big outsides. Jake Langlois, 6'10", can pass the ball. Um, Felix Chapman from Tornadoes, he's a big guy but can pass the ball. So if you can put some pressure on another team and figure out a way to get uh, them away from the net, then it doesn't allow your middle attack to be effective and I think that changes the game. Um, and I think, so the team that does that better obviously is going to automatically have an advantage. Um, and like you said, Spencer, Spencer Andrews is here, he didn't set yesterday. If you can get them away from the net and cause him to move a little bit, maybe that puts some pressure on him. And you know, But if he's a really good setter, maybe it doesn't. We'll, uh, we'll find that out. But Well, yeah, and fortunately for the Ramblers, they do have outside hitters like Ryan Mather and Jordan Hoppy, who can really take care of that out-of-system out system. high ball yeah, for sure. um, option as well. So starting teams are out on the floor. So for the Ramblers, like we said, we have middle blockers Antoine Aguilar from Long Beach State. Josh Duarte, number 32, Ramblers wearing their Sunday whites. Will be on the left side of your television screen or computer screen, whatever you be watching on. Ryan Schickling, the libero, number eight in the black jersey. Spencer Andrew, the setter, number 15. Jordan Hoppy, Ryan Mather. And for the Matadors, Coach Beaumont, do you see their starters over there? Yeah, I have, looks like Martin Petrus, I'm going to mess up some of these names. So. Patrice, Patrice. yeah. Patrice. Um, and then I'm definitely missing some names here. I'm trying to circle them up now here. Uh, Brett Nick. Massetti, the other middle blocker. Yep, Nick Ramos is setting. Jordan Wale is the other outside hitter. He played last night, number eight. He's and this is a new Libro from yesterday here. Uh, Daniel Gustavo Calvente. Yep. He's, a, he's a new guy. The, the, the smaller guy was in there yesterday, so let's see what he can do. Look for Bustos, number six, Diego Bustos, the outside hitter. He played last night as well in the 02 position. Meanwhile, 01, Carlos Serrano, who carried a big offensive load for the Matadors as well. Wale, the opposite hitter. So, and the setter, number three, Victor Vasquez Lopez, getting us ready to start here. 
This is a big first serve. How you start matters. And through the middle, right out of the gates, Josh Duarte getting the first point for the Ramblers. And a very nice pass for Las Vegas, as you spoke of, to get this match started. Yeah, it's a good pass by Ryan Schiffling. Right on the money, good 31 run. It's a good way to start for the Ramblers. So this is Jordan Hoppy from Concordia University with his first serve of the match and doesn't clear the net that time. So we're tied at one point apiece. And Carlos Serrano starting to serve for the Matadors. Jump float serve down the line, passed well by Nick England. Ryan Mather's first chance, and it's Diego Busto shutting him down, getting his first block there against the six foot eight Ryan Mather. That's, a, that's an interesting matchup there that usually is won by Mathers, and he doesn't seem bothered at all. Again, pass by Nick England. Mather with a second chance, and this time gets it to the corner past the Bustos block. So a nice response from Mather as Andrews, the setter, giving him a chance to repeat and delete that error block from the previous play, Coach. Setters that can repeat sets are the best because you're giving your hitter a lot of confidence and saying, I trust you to get this done, do it again. Is that something as a coach that you want to see from your setter? Yes, 100%. Because if you go away from a guy that just got solo blocked, you're sending a message of like, hey, I don't really trust you too much. And going right back to him right there was huge. That's a good move by Spencer. And are there any parameters to that? What if it's match point? Do you still go back to the guy that made the hitting error? I like it. I like it, especially if that guy's your guy. Good short serve there. Good coaching insight there from Coach Beaumont of New Jersey's Team Freedom. Just coming off a nice four set victory over the defending champions of OC Stunners previously before this match. So happy to have you here in the broadcaster's booth for a little bit. Yeah, man, this is a this is a privilege and pleasure, seriously. Thanks for taking time and pushing that flight back on your private charter jet to uh, stick around <laughs> with us for a little bit longer. If only that were true, but I am happy about that. Well, every seat in the Pierce Sports Complex is a good seat to watch volleyball here, especially if you're in person or viewing from anywhere around the world. Thanks for joining us. That's a good rip and a really good pass. He said he gets blocked back and recycled. Bustos again, blocked back and recovered. This time it's Wale on the right side, and Nick England gets in on the block party for his own stuff down. <laughs> That's a great block. Three straight hitting attempts from the Matadors stopped by the Ramblers. Finally, that third one being terminal. Another good pass off of a great serve. And another Rambler block for a point. So like you were talking about the importance of the pass, Matadors doing a good job fighting off the Ryan Mathers serve. He is one of the Ramblers' stronger servers as this will be his third serve of this run here. He's adjusted his serve a little bit too. He moved over. Yeah, coming out of the middle of the court a little bit more yeah. as opposed to the right side. Yeah, and I, I, I like it. I like that he's doing that. Oh, nobody home. Oh. Well, the setter dug that ball and unfortunately, Libero couldn't get there. It was a nice dig height-wise, but just a little too tight. So if the setter wants to dig the ball, Coach, where should he be digging that ball for his team? I think it's got to be right in the middle of the court, five to eight feet off the net, you know, maybe even ten if you want your Libero to use their hands. And preferably, yeah, who do you want taking that second ball? I think the Libros are, are doing a good job for the most part. We we have an interesting system because we, we use cap to set the second ball a lot. Um, but I, I'm okay with our Libero taking that ball, especially if they're doing a good job with it. Nice press on that block there. That previous play where the setter dug that first ball, the biggest problem was the middle transition backwards with no visual on where his Libro was. So he actually got in his lane where he needed to come in and set the ball. And even though it was a tighter set, he would have been able to get that, but the, the middle backed up into him. Great insight there from one of the best coaches here in the NBA. It's Ryan Schickman passes that ball up to the tape. Antoine oh. Aguilar going to the oh. corner. We have conflicting line Ooh, judges. I don't know. I thought that would be a challengeable call because yeah. I thought I saw it hit that the corner. That ball was in, yeah. Pretty early on in the 
first set here to use a challenge. So we're going to play on and go to the next point here. Jordan Wale serving again. Passed by Hoppy. Here's England from the left side nice up against swing. the three-man block, and England finds a way through to score that point. Coach, speak a little bit to the importance of the three-man block. So us, please. I am a firm believer that if you're going to triple block, you have to do it with discipline. So it's a good idea. We actually used a triple block in the last match to, to try to stop Jair. He was killing us. Uh, and it ended well be because we got a block on him. But if you're triple blocking and you're not disciplined, I think it actually hurts you. It hurts your defense and it gives more, more hands for a good attacker to look at. Um, but if you're doing it successfully, it's a really effective part of the game. And at this level, these guys, if they can do it, they can get a lot of block touches and, and some, and some uh, block kills, which is what we want. A bit of the evolution of men's volleyball that we see you know, uh, three-man blocking, faster offenses. But yeah, I agree with you. You do have to have blockers that, wow, what a dig. That's a great dig down the line there. Man blockers bun that are, on man bun. Blockers that are bought in, willing to work super hard to sell out for their teammates to get squared up shoulder to shoulder oh, yeah. with their teammates to not have any seams to hit through as a hitter. And then for their defenders on their own team to be able to, to work past you know, and behind that block in defense. Yeah, that unselfishness that you're talking about is so important. And there's some guys in this league who do it really well. With the chance, Good dig from Bustos, Serrano once again. And this time he gets it past the block. Be Brett Massetti. So interesting seeing when a middle is serving what a setter's thinking about, you know, where do I want to go with this ball? Do I use a setter dump? Do I challenge this middle's defense? It's an interesting part of the game. Yeah, you got to hit right at him. That's a good decision there. Well, ever since the libero came into our sport, middle blockers, time in the back row has been significantly Limited. decreased. Yeah. Challenging transition for me when I was playing college volleyball. First two years, we didn't have the libero. That's funny. And then the second two years, we did have the libero. So that was a bit of a challenge because I missed playing some defense and getting some digs here. Definitely and there. an adjustment, yeah. Good run, good run. That's a great pick option there, I like that. The pick has become such a weapon in men's volleyball as well. You guys ran it really well with Cap and, and uh, your other outside hitter. How do you guys practice that play and how do you know when you want to utilize it? You know what's funny about Ryan Kenny, our setter, is he could not run a pick for three whole sets and then he's throwing one in there. So at practice, you know, we try to do a good job of making sure that we are always ready for it. Like you should be on your first step by the time the setter's touching that ball. So sometimes in practice, what I'll do is I'll sit towards the back of the court and I'll just watch our outsides receiving, our back row outside more specifically. And if that guy isn't taking his approach to go, I'll get on him about the scoring opportunity with him. Importance of that in today's style of volleyball and the speed of men's so volleyball, important. even women's volleyball is starting to utilize the big attack option I know. as well. I know there's some teams doing it really well and too. There's a couple different philosophies. There's, you know, are you running the bick to a, a spot, mm -hmm. right? Or are you running it on a on off of the middle blocker's shoulder, who should be making an, a, an approach attempt yeah. as well, uh, whether it's a front one or a back one? How do you determine which philosophy you really want to use? I think it's a read. I think the middle back, whoever's running that big attack, has to read what the middle and the front is doing. What our, what our middle blocker or our middle attacker at that moment is doing. If they're running a 31 away from the setter, then our middle backs know that they need to stay on the setter. If they're running a one, then they'll go kind of over the top, more towards that B gap, and we'll attack that, you know, that B gap. Um, Ryan Mathers with an unusual roll shot. Usually not something that he would do. He knows it right away, too. Yeah, that should have been just a free ball over, but... I think he kind of got caught in an awkward position. He was way off the court, backpedaling. Always in scoring mode. I love it, Ryan. We got some guys with some good hair out here right now. This game is filled with good hair. You have to have right side help on that, and it has to be on time. And that's that discipline blocking we were talking about. Yeah, very know? much so. Having a, a good right side help blocker, staying in there. Uh, high hands, you know, expecting the middle to come through. So to go back to the point of the pick like we were talking about, 
in transition, I think, is what we were just discussing. What about serve reception? and when you're hopefully in a perfect pass offense. Yeah, so if you saw our game earlier, we ran a pick with Cap when he was passing in the one spot, you know, in, 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 a, in a rotation two situation. And that's like the most deceiving one, I think, because he's coming around a lot of times. And it, as a middle blocker on the, on the um, opposition side, they don't even see that guy. Right. Um, but I like when our guys are looping. Uh -huh. I think they get a bigger approach like that. I think they get more of an explosive move. Um, you just have to have a really good connection and trust between your hitter and your setter. Um, but I, I, I don't like to use, um, to overuse the Vic. I think it's one of those plays that should happen. Um, a net violation there. That's unfortunate on the tip. I think it's one of those that you should use when it makes sense. And it's weird, right? When does it make sense? I don't know, you know, but I think if you overuse it, it becomes predictable and it makes the middle's life on the other team pretty easy. And what if your setter gets pulled off the net, say six, Ooh. seven feet off the net? Do you still run the big? Do you give up on it? What's the philosophy there? I think I think our outside hitters are made for those specific moments. I think you have recycle players on the outside that are smart, can hit high, and you know are good at dealing with junk. And not that that set's going to be junk, but it's just not in the most comfortable situations. But I would run a big from there, too. I mean, when our setter gets pulled past the three zone, we still run a big behind our setter sometimes. And that's, we didn't do it at all in this tournament, but I, that's something that we've been putting in practice a lot more. Yeah. Um, awesome insight, Coach. Thank you very yeah, much for, for sharing sure. without giving away too many tidbits for the <laughs> opponents, you know. Yeah. But uh, it's an absolute, absolute honor to pick your brain a little bit in terms of your team development. So. Ramblers have established a three-point advantage here, now just one point away from our technical timeout. Nick England with the defense of the Ramblers, couldn't get that ball back up in the air, and side out awarded to the Matadors. This is Diego Bustos getting ready to serve. Born and raised in San Diego, California. Here's his jump serve. That one goes out of bounds to the inline, so a little just too much power on that one. 16-13, Ramblers with the advantage, and we're going to take a quick technical timeout, so stick around. We'll be right back. Sim. Well, the players coming back out onto the court after that technical timeout. Matt Prosser joined by Coach Justin Beaumont of New Jersey Team Freedom, giving us some high quality, in-depth information that uh, some of you younger coaches out there might be able to take advantage of next time you're in practice. And Antoine Aguilar will be serving now for the Ramblers. Jump float serve, passed up to the net. Serrano on the left side. Hoppy's got to go over with it. Overpass to the Ramblers. Bump set from Aguilar. Mather on the right side. Blasting the blockers' hands, and Ryan Mather scores in transition for the Ramblers. It's interesting because Spencer is live right now. Spencer Andrews for the Ramblers. And I'm not sure if he's a bad blocker. He's probably a pretty good blocker, honestly. But he's undersized, right? And I think when you have that undersized setter front row, you really have to try to take advantage of that and score as many points as you can. So see if the Matadors try to play this ball to the outside, which I think should be the It was quick as he's falling down. Oh, and no. it's going to work for the Ramblers. Wow. Another dig for Antoine Aguilar. And Spencer Andrews does a nice job literally falling to his hip. Gives a set to the middle, and Josh Duarte scores the point. The Matadors call a timeout. 
Gives me a chance to ask Coach Bowman a couple more questions here while we got you. You gotta love when your middles are digging though. Oh, speaks when your to middles my heart. are digging speaks and, to my heart. and you're scoring points, that's like what better energy to have. That's the best. I love seeing middles get digs. I love seeing them score serve aces, right? Yeah. Um, look, liberos are a great addition to our game. I'm glad they have a role. They do good things, right? Middle blockers can still play defense here and there. It's a bit of uh, you know self pride. Yeah. I always tried to make it a, a very big point to do the best that I could when I was in the back row for that one opportunity, and uh, sell out for my teammates when yep. you know my number got called there. So. Yeah, he's doing a good job right now. He's not even serving the ball, you know, maybe super aggressively from a speed standpoint. He's placing it, putting it in a smart spot, and then he's like, you know what, I'm good at defense. I'm going to get a touch here. For well, let's match. talk about that a little bit, Coach, because, you know, the service game in men's volleyball, a lot of people will complain about it, say there's so many misserves. Like, why are there so many misserves in volleyball? So talk to me on the philosophy oh, of set. how important is pressure versus errors versus aces in your mind? For men's volleyball, so I coach men's and women's volleyball. For men's volleyball, I think it's pedal to the floor most of the time. Because if you serve an easy ball at this level, you're getting something smacked back at you really, really quickly. And I think you've right. got to go for it. Right. Now, as a coach, statistically, looking at eight or nine missed serves on paper is not attractive. But if, but if you're scoring points or getting that other team rattled and out of system, I think those eight or nine misses are justified. Right? I think you have to do it. Um, I mean, Antoine has just served, in my opinion, five or six points in a row that, are, that most people in this league could pass a three pass on. Right. But he's got a good block set up with a weaker lineup in the front row for Matadors. And it's just smart serving. Smart serving is aggressive serving. Um, when guys go back there and just rip their hardest serve and miss four or five into the net, that's not aggressive serving. That's just wailing at the ball. Now, do you typically have someone on your team that always has the green light to rip their serve? Yeah, for sure. We, you know, we got two or three guys that I would say I don't really talk to them much about where to serve or how to serve. I let them go get it. Um, maybe there's moments in the game where I'll say to them, hey, you know, we're blocking really well right now. Let's be smart about this. That's a useful dig there. Antoine with another good set. But, yeah, two or three guys I would say have the green light, and then the rest more placement and a little bit shorter leash. Oh, good spin on that ball. Very smart. Oh, you got to move your feet on that one. Oh, oh that's four contacts. Four contacts as the ball ricocheted off of Massetti's arm on his approach. Unfortunately, bad break for the Matadors on that one, but kudos to the Ramblers with some good quality one-handed defense. Not allowing the Matadors to find the floor or get a side out. And again, Antoine Aguilar serving for the Ramblers. It's a great run for them. See, he goes aggressive on that one. Makes, makes sense. He's on like serve number eight. We talk a lot about serve progression, right? So is that something that you utilize where your first one's in and then you kind of turn it up, dial it up a little bit? Especially at the beginning of a match, right? This is the first set. These teams are just coming out. They're just, you know, getting used to the light, whatever the case is. See one in. See one in, and then next time you go back there, you want to go ham, I'm okay with it. But, yeah, if you never see one in the court, I mean, you're, you're not even sure if we can play defense, you know? And my final question for you sort of on this topic, when you're preparing to play a team, are you looking at serving a specific player or more attacking the seams between the two passers? I think it depends. If we, if we know a guy is struggling passing the ball, like on a specific weekend, say, good run out of the middle right there, nice turn back to the one, um, then maybe we'll serve spots. But the problem with serving spots is you tell these guys, hey, let's serve a spot. They serve a little easier now, right, because they're trying to hit their mark. And a lot of times I just tell them, hey, go back there and let's rip our best serve and let's try to hit it in the seam and let's see what happens, you know. And uh, I think that that pays dividends as you go down the stretch of the match. A little hybrid floaty there. Well, Matadors 15, Ramblers 23, so it's officially the business end of set number one here. Yeah. Two points away, a side out, and maybe a real point for the Ramblers to take the set one victory. Ramblers have been siding out at a pretty good clip, but really built this lead up from that long service run that we saw from Antoine Aguilar and some good defense as well. And to your point, Coach, like we were talking about, a service error 
from the jump serve out the sideline. So it's now set point to the Ramblers. You know serving. what's funny about that? They ripped the ball, man. Absolutely. And I would love for it to be in, but go get after it, man, at that point. That wall that way that time. Nice swing yeah. on the left side. That was a really good pass. I like that arc on that pass. I like the placement middle of the court. It's a good pass. Jordan Wale, the benefactor of that good pass, as you say. Still set point now for the Ramblers. 16 serving 24. Carlos Serrano with a jump serve. No touch indicated off the block from the right side substitution. That was Quinn Peterson taking a swing. We're gonna get a challenge here, I think, for a touch. I think we are getting a challenge called in from head coach Miguel of the Ramblers. So this will go up to the replay booth. And Justin, while I got you here, let me ask you your philosophy on the challenge system while you're coaching. So in the moment, right now, it's 16-24, possibly 17-24. What do, you, what do you think about, you know, is this a good challenge? Would you challenge this play? Would you, I mean, give me some insight on that. I think it's a good challenge. If you definitely think there's a touch, you got to fight for every single point. I, I'll challenge at 1-0. I'll challenge at 24-23. It doesn't matter to me to score. I think you have to fight for your team. You have to, you have to show your guys that you're willing to do something from the sideline to help them. And a challenge is, a, is one of those l few ways that a coach can actually influence the game. Um, I actually challenged earlier today, and I wasn't certain that there was a net, but I felt good about it, and it was a big time in the game, and I think that challenge ended up turning the momentum around for us. So I think that, that could help as well. So you're saying that you're okay with a, an occasional gamble yeah. sometimes with the yeah. challenge. Yeah, and, and you know, you could be wrong. I, I think being wrong is okay. You know, maybe stopping some momentum sometimes will help, you know. I think the Matadors have a, have a good argument here, but the Ramblers saw it right away. It's interesting here, too, because the challenge system, all the players are allowed to see the screen. <laughs> and they're all watching it. And uh, so they just kind of joke with each other about the touch calls and stuff like that. And <laughs> yeah, there is a little bit of uh, camaraderie ship here as the teams can see the challenge review television screen that we have down here, although the head challenge official is upstairs, so he's not influenced by the no players. No bias, yeah, that's good. Perhaps at the next event, the replay system will be courtside, and you at home will be able to see what exactly is being challenged and the review system as well. That's going to be really big. I think people are going to like that a lot. I know in other leagues and in uh, NCAA gyms where they do have the challenge system, you very rarely do even get to see what the play was. You just get an indication from the referees, right? Sure. Um, I know over at Long Beach State, I broadcast there, and. We don't even get to see the replay. We just hear from the official what it is. Yeah. Um, over in Italy, they have a, a video check system where they have an official that runs through the videos. They show the very defining moment of the play up on the big screen, yeah. and then they make the uh, point call towards and the team. Then you get uh, some crowd, team. crowd sounds there. Right, <laughs> yeah. But you're right. The players don't know what they're looking at. It's almost, and it hasn't been utilized here so much, but almost as like a third timeout. Yeah. for you to use yeah. and talk with your team. But with the TV right here on the sideline, it's a bit of a distraction for the players. Sure. And that call is upheld. So results in a point to the Matadors. And maybe not enough uh, not enough evidence not to enough, overturn. Yeah. Exactly, sure. not enough evidence here. But still set point to them. So Serrano continuing to serve. All of that for that. I don't know if that's what I would have done. Well, I mean, it effectively sort of iced yeah. Carlos Serrano on that jump serve, and Las Vegas wins set one, 25-17. Teams will switch ins. We will be right back after this three-minute break, so stay with us. This is the NBA from San Bernardino, California. <laughs> Sim.
Welcome back inside Pierce Sports Complex in San Bernardino, California. I'm Matt Prosser along with Coach Justin Beaumont. Thanks for joining us. Las Vegas Ramblers winning set number one of our 6 p.m. match here, the final match of the weekend. Event number one nearly in the books. However, it's a three out of five match, so the Matadors still have a chance. Ramblers taking a one set to zero victory so far after set one. Coach. If you're coaching the Ramblers, what's your message to your team after that victory? We got to stay pedal to the metal here. You know, it's so easy after a convincing win like that where you're seemingly doing nothing wrong um, to relax. And, you know, last match of the weekend, these guys have been here all weekend. They had a whole day off yesterday after playing Friday. Um, so, you know, fatigue is probably kicking in at, at a certain point. And uh, just basically, hey, guys, let's play hard. Let's play hard for the whole time. And, you know, if we... Uh, if we take it easy here, then we're going to make this harder than it has to be. You know, yes. let's, let's get it done. Good insights there. And then for the opponent, for the Matadors, what are you saying to that side over there if you're their coach? We have to capitalize on good passing because passed the ball really well that game and just did not score points. And what I would be telling my hitters is, hey, go for it. If they block us eight times, then they block us eight times. We got people covering. Like, let's get after it. And, um, and don't be afraid to, you know, hit an angle or hit hit a hand that you don't normally do because that's how you're going to get better here. Um, and run, run the ball in the middle a little bit more. See what's going on here. Establish yeah. that. Pass and activate the middles. Yeah. Nick England getting us going here for set number two. A sharp angle from Jordan Hoppy on the left side for the Ramblers. So a good pass from the Matadors that time, but the setter calling his own number, going for the dump. That was... Victor Vasquez Lopez that couldn't find the floor. I like the idea. The idea was good. It's just you have to you have to use your peripheral vision and see that that blocker is not blocking. It was an easy pickup. Another good pass, man. Yeah, there you go. Establish that middle. Oh, Bustos is there to shut Nick England down from that big attack in transition. So. Coach, you're right. So far, two good passes from the Matadors. They did pass at a 67% positive passing rating in set number one, although they only hit 270 for the set. So offensively struggling, but passing somewhat sufficient. <laughs> Love and when the middle's ready for a dump and it gets blocked. Midair covering that yeah. time from Antoine. Oh, they got to call an that one. attack off yeah. the block through the inline. So Matadors. Take those there. risks. That's a good risk take. Like you said, getting rewarded for those risks. Can't play it safe all the time. Nope. Vasquez Lopez with a good serve. Challenging England, but Antoine Aguilar gets another opportunity through the middle and terminates. This is a... Uh Good time for him to go back and serve right at the beginning of this set. Let's see if he can reel off a couple like he did last set. We were talking about that run. About six serves halfway through set number one that really established that big lead. Wale tips it over, but it's picked up from Hoppy. And Duarte in the middle on transition gets it. How important is it, Coach, to be able to set middle in transition for your side? Extremely. I think if you can run your middle in transition, you put a lot of pressure on your opponent's pins to pinch in and help on that middle attack, which will then open up your fast tempo offense to those outsides and right sides. And I think that's something we put a lot of emphasis on in our gym for sure. Another dig by Antoine. This guy's the MVP of this weekend. Oh, Bustos getting the kill off of the Rambler block as it goes out of bounds. But yeah, another dig for the middle blocker, Aguilar, that time. I, I would venture to say that Antoine has more digs than Ryan Schickling right now, which is that could awesome. That be a very, very valid point you make. However, digs are not oh. counted in our statistical system here, unfortunately. So that time, a little miscommunication on the serve reception between England and Schickling. He went for the hand pass short, and Ryan was like, you're all over it, dude. <laughs> and then he wasn't. <laughs> able to laugh it off. And Regroup for this point here as Bustos continues, this time with a, a roll shot jump serve. Mm. 
Hoppy from the left side. Dug up. Bustos in transition, but can't quite get it over the net that time. And a little upset with that choice there. He apologized to his libero like, dude, that was a great dig. I'm so sorry for missing that into the net because that was a great dig. It was a great dig and just a misconnection there. Unfortunate and untimely hitting error from David Bustos. Good hand pass, another good pass, man. Yeah, there you go. Right There's the Patrice out of the middle. Had one attempt last game and now gets his first one here early in set number two. So, coach, they must have heard you a little bit. Pass the ball better and activate their middles. That's it. So far, the Matadors have attempted to do that, and it seems to be working. Patrice back to the inline to serve. Still working on England. Right side from Wale. That's a good run. Sorry, Hoppy that time. And Nicely run offensive play that time by the Ramblers. His name fits him well because he jumps really freaking high. At first I thought it was a joke, like that's yeah. not really his last name, but yeah. it is Jordan Hoppe, H-O-P-P-E. Well, he is Hoppy because he, he gets up. Can jump. Nice Another good sweep. pass, man. To the middle, yeah. That's awesome stuff by the Matadors. I'm proud of them doing that. Sounds like you're coaching for two teams now all of a sudden, <laughs> right? Good pass equals... A set to the middle, and their quick hitters are ready to get those attempts and score the points for their side. It's so easy for setters to get bored too, right? Like, hey, we just did that four times in a row. So what? Do it again. Yeah, if it's I working, don't keep doing it. Don't go away from it. Stick to the game plan. Oh. While no, they're just uh, getting home no, net advantage there. <laughs> no home net advantage there, even though the Matadors do call this their home gym. Need to like check the net tension. Substitution coming in here? Not yet. Running a little modified 6-2 over there for the Matadors, potentially. Oh, Whoa, nobody no home. left side hitter over there. That's an easy decision for Spencer. The Ramblers make him pay. Yep. Antoine Aguilar taking care of that one as some confusion on the Matadors' side in what rotation that they should be in. Montez, the outside hitter, ready to pass here. Wale on the right out of the back row, and he can't find court. So once again, Coach Beaumont emphasizing run the middle. When they go to their pins, they have some problems siding out, and the Ramblers now back up by two. I would just do it until it hurts. And if, if uh, you know, they get a couple of block touches and they score on it. So you're a man after my own heart. Just basically set the middle as often as you can. That's it. Especially That's if it's it. working, right? Yeah, and serve receive is the most obvious time that a setter is going to run the middle. So, but like you said earlier, in transition, if you can set your middle, get after it. Trust them to get the job done. Especially we have some pretty big and talented middles in this league that hit well, great angles. You would know. Smart. You've got the biggest one on your team, seven-footer Paul Balanza. Yeah, yeah. And Matt Seifert, who's six foot ten. Six eleven, yeah. Six eleven. You have a very tall team. Big guy, yeah. This is actually the tallest I think we've ever been. And Quince Peterson gets a second chance opportunity and converts that one for a point after making a hitting error on that previous attempt. Again, Spencer Andrews did a good job there going back to him after hitting error. Hey, dude, I still trust you. Get after it. Show me that you can do this. Good job by him. Nice dig, a chance for the Ramblers. Hoppy coming flying out of the back row for a bump set Bick. Maybe not the fastest Bick you've seen, but available Bick. You know, it was behind the setter like we talked about earlier. Yeah, that makes it spot. difficult. Right. Good run. So we'll see a substitution here for the Matadors as number 16, Nick DiMatteo, will come in replacing Jordan Wally, the opposite hitter. So for a new right side attacker there for the Matadors. And out Couple of system passes pass. Off the net, yeah. Andrews goes for the dump, but it's covered. And the block finds the floor. So Matadors doing a good job on their block and defense, getting reset for that quick play. And 
We'll see another substitution come in here for the Matadors. This is going to be Serrano replacing Brett Massetti to serve. We'll see if Serrano plays middle through the front row, but this is sort of that creativity in the lineup that we were talking about earlier, Coach, and Matadors trying to play some games with their own personnel and seeing if they can solve the riddle that is the Ramblers right now. Coach is trying everything, and I love that. Try things. Nick Good England, by England getting that ball to squirt through the block a little bit. Not the cleanest of kills, but effective. As the Matadors reverse that substitution of Serrano and Massetti. I think that is no more subs for them. Right? Might have been six already. Could be. Diego Bustos has to just slap this one over. Quick set to Aguilar through the middle again. So Ramblers have established the quick attack and, like you said, Coach, continue to utilize it. If it's working, why stop doing it? Yeah. Keep running. And the Ramblers are interesting because they run that hard curl defense where their, their off blocker actually curls all the way behind the block. So if you tip it to them, it essentially takes them out of the play. So the middle becomes the only option and somewhat obvious. Um, but they're running it effectively still. No touch on the block, and that ball goes out of bounds. So good effort from the Matadors, just can't convert, and it's 13-9 Ramblers. Four-point lead here as we get closer to our technical timeout. So, Coach, as uh, you know, the first weekend comes to a close for you guys, getting two victories. About a month's time, you'll be back here in San Bernardino. What does the next couple of weeks look like for New Jersey Team Freedom? It's going to sound funny, but we have to make sure we can get out here <laughs> with our flights. Um, so just making sure that the logistics is all set in stone. Hey, what time are you guys supposed to fly out? What day? Maybe we, maybe we just plan on coming a day early, um, you know, so that we don't have those flight issues. Um, so are you but, saying you had some logistical issues getting out here for this week? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, we had... We're missing a couple guys out here and, and flights canceled and stuff like that. So making sure that that doesn't happen. And again, that's kind of out of our control, but maybe if we fly a day early or something, then we can avoid those conflicts. But um, on a serious note, as far as volleyball goes, I think making sure we're staying healthy. The things that you can control? Yeah, the things that we can sort of control. Stay healthy, stay in shape, um, you know, eat correctly. We're always preaching to the guys to take care of their bodies. And this is a, it's a long season, you know, six events over five months, it's a lot of volleyball. Um, and, you know, getting in the gym and trying to play a local tournament is something we're gonna try to do over the next couple of weeks just to stay toned and work on some of the things. We'll watch the film from this weekend and critique some things and then go back to the drawing board, making sure we're on top of things. And without kind of divulging too much information, anything specifically that you wanna work on with your team before the next event? Well, I think we did a really good job of uh, not passing well and still finding a way to win this weekend. You know, we didn't pass as well as I think we can, uh, but serving, our serving efficiency was very low in my opinion. Um, I looked at the stats just briefly after the game and I think we're a very aggressive serving team, but we weren't this weekend. So I think if we can serve aggressively all the time, I think we can be effective in this league. Um, so serving and passing, I don't, I don't talk to the guys too much about attacking and blocking. Those are skills that I think they know how to do. They do them well. They're excited to do them. I put a lot of emphasis on the first contact, the serve, and the pass. And if we can do those things better than our opponents, for the most part, we're going to do okay. Good stuff. Brushing up on that stuff is important. Matador struggling from the reception a little bit here in this set. Another missed opportunity there for the Matadors on a single block. Now we did see a timeout get called by the Matadors, so that did replace our technical timeout at 16 points, and Ramblers have developed a six-point lead. We'll see a substitution on the Ramblers' side. This is Max Osmondson coming in to replace Nick England in the back row, so we'll see if Max, well, so. So now that was their last substitution. That was their that last was substitution. Matadors effectively out of substitution possibilities. As Josh Duarte, really just pounds down that overpass. Yeah, that was a good swing. I think he mishit it a little too. Imagine if he got his whole hand on Didn't it. Didn't really get all of it that time, but doesn't matter. Still found the floor and a point from the serve of, once again, this man, Antoine Aguilar. This guy's doing exactly what he's supposed to be doing in this match. 
Well, that time the Matadors passed nicely, set the quick for a quick winner and a side out. So, And you know, we talked about this. We don't have digging stats, and Antoine wasn't necessarily getting aces. So you don't have statistical things to look at. But what he's doing is his job to the most effective measure. He's doing a good job going in there and doing his, you know, his part. And as a coach, is that really all you can ask for from your players that's is it. come in and do your job? That's it. And that's what I look for. You know, statistically, I would like for you guys to do, you know, look good on paper, sure. But I'm, I'm more of a, an eye test guy. If you are doing what you're supposed to be doing and you have a face of, I know what's going on right now, then I, I like that. Some of those statistics that don't show up. On right? Yeah. Those intangibles are a huge part of the game. And we've got a couple guys that do really well with that. And so do the Ramblers. The Ramblers are doing a good job of that today. Well, this has been all the Ramblers so far through this set. And set number one currently with a six-point advantage. Came into this game ready to go, knowing it was the last match of weekend number one. Prime time here on Sunday evening, wearing their Sunday whites. And Love a that run. attack through the middle once again for the Matadors is successful. All predicated from that good pass in serve receive that you spoke about, Coach. The Matadors are one of my favorite teams in this league because they're gritty, they're small, and they're going to try to outwork you. And if they turn that on a little bit, we could have a really good match here. Oh, somebody go. Pinballing nice. up in the rafters to a free ball. Pass by Duarte. Duarte tips it back, and it goes in. Oh, we're going to have a challenge we're here. Gonna have a Hard challenge here, looks like. Some clarification from our second referee there, Patrick Bradley. Coach a little Natasha laugh. is showing the European challenge signal, making a box with their fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Holding up her hand in the yeah. shape of a C, they yeah. want to challenge it, but yeah. Coach you need Bradley to use wants the, card. the green card that we have right here. I got one, although I don't get oh, to you, use the. You have a challenge card? Oh, yeah, it's interesting. A, it's a business card. Oh, that's green. That's hilarious. From the man that provides the video Got challenge it. system here. Our three digital video, Lloyd Stevens. He's doing a fantastic job, by the way. They all are. He really is doing a great job. So let's see here about this call. Very interesting here to see if our line judge missed that one. It's. Uh, Rena Smith, the line judge, along with Justin Baker on the corners, and the veteran Tony Chan as our up ref. Just chatting with Tony Chan this morning, trying to estimate or guesstimate how many matches of volleyball has he officiated in his professional in his referee life? career. Oh my goodness. Now, mind you, he coached, I'm sorry, he refereed some of my high school games okay. in Ventura, California back in 1996. So he's been refereeing for over 20 years. You want to take a stab at where we kind of Does ballpark? he actually have a number? He does not. Okay. But that was the first thing I asked him this morning as we shared the elevator down at the hotel. How many matches of volleyball have you refereed in your career? Yeah, including juniors in college. I mean, quick math, I think my guess would be 10,000. So you're a little bit on the over side. Okay. But we said conservatively ballpark was 5,000, okay. but probably more likely somewhere in the 7,000 neighborhood. Wow. 7,000 matches. That's incredible. That's incredible. This officiating crew has done a spectacular job this weekend. They really have, yeah. They've done really well, and, you know, the challenge system is definitely helping with that because they're human, they make mistakes, and we can... I we love the challenge system that it, it gets the call right. Yeah. And it it avoids any arguments, sure. any you're wrong, any heated emotions. Taking things personally. You have yeah. video proof that it's either in or out, you get the call right, yep. and you get back to playing. Okay? We've seen it you know, internationally with the Hawkeye system in the Olympics, which yep. is a, an amazing system. Uh, over is that the Italy. one with tennis, where the ball right. like comes Right, where they in? have a little yeah. line, and it, they show where it bounces. Over in Europe, That's they have incredible the video too. check system, which is awesome. They just And they have no line judges over there as well. So they just instantly go to the video check. And what I also have seen is that a lot of players will admit to the touch if they touch it on the block. And they're honest with their coach. And they're honest with it. Sure. And don't burn your challenge. I touched it. Let's just go on to the next play. Move on. Yeah, for sure. And I really do enjoy seeing that dynamic kind of emerge from this video challenge sort of era, if you will, right? Yeah, I mean, 
just from last year to this year, there's a huge transition from complaining, like you said, yeah. and arguing and right. taking forever to, hey, we have something that's here to help. And I think it's it's immediately uh, helped the league. So Definitely, absolutely. Good it, move, good it does move by the league. Provide a better product for the league as well, for sure. And yeah, once again, you do get definitive evidence of either an incorrect or a correct call. So you gotta get it right. We got a call coming in here. Just a second. Ball is called in, and the point does go towards. The Matadors are surprised here. Point does go to the Ramblers, so still some extra conversation. However, coach for the Matadors won't get any secondary looks at that. So a little bit more extracurricular activity going on, but our video check official did confirm it. Ball was in, so it's overturned. Here's Jordan Hoppy serving now, 19, serving 13. Ramblers up by six. I have a fun fact. Well, let's hear it. The head coach of the Matadors is married to the right side from the Stunners, and they just did their gender reveal today. It's the four match, and it's going to be a girl. <laughs> it and is going to be a girl. Amazing. That was a very awesome gender reveal where. She tossed up a volleyball for Jair to spike. He spiked it. And he so popped cool. it, and out came the pink confetti. And then he started crying. And then he <laughs> teared up on the court. It was a very special moment for those two, expecting their first baby girl here later this year. So congrats to them. That's so freaking awesome. I love congrats that. Congrats to them. And the Matadors call a timeout. Stick with us. We'll finish up set number two here probably right after this timeout but we're going to take a short break so come right back with us OSIM Back to it now as the players come back after that short timeout. Jordan Hoppy and the Ramblers with a seven point advantage now. 20 serving 13. This is set number two. Ramblers with a one set to zero advantage here. Big jump serve out of the timeout and it's a service ace. Wow, out of nowhere, Jordan Hoppy from the inline. Coach, out of a timeout? Out of a That's timeout. how you serve? Good for you, buddy. A that statement was statement awesome. serve right there. The Ramblers as Colby Elder, number two, coming in to take over the set. Back to Brent Massetti scores the point. So, Coach Beaumont, once again, your philosophy working for the Matadors. I'm, I'm going to venture to say they're probably up near 700 from the middle of attack right now in this set. They have scored over and over again with that. Wale's jump serve, going after Schickling, nicely passed. Oh, good Osmondson pitch. gets his first attempt, and that one goes sailing through the inline and out of bounds, so just a little too much mustard on Max Osmondson's first attack opportunity there. And it's now 15 serving 21. Matador still playing with a little bit of a deficit here. Oh, that serve just misses. I don't know. I don't know about that Possibly one. caught the inline, but I'm not going to see a challenge as they already burned one in this game. And so. it just happened. So and it did just happen, fresh. right? A little gun shy on pulling that green. When the Matadors do get the pass up to the net, they're able to side out, but the, the Ramblers' service pressure has really hampered that for the Matadors keeping them out of system and really giving their outside hitters and pin hitters some troubles all night so far. And they're not scoring real points. They need to score when they have the ball and they're serving, and that's not happening. You're right. So that's they're, the only way you can go on runs. Their block and defense has not really proven to be very effective for the Matadors. And when they are serving, 
They're not scoring off of that serve either. So 16-22 here. Good service pressure there. Osmondson again, and this time it goes into the net. So Osmondson 0 for 2 while he's in the front row after replacing Nick England. There's a real English. point. And there is a real point. Unfortunately, it's off of the hitting error and not uh, a block point for the Matadors. The jump serve passed well off the tape. Aguilar goes with a cutback, but it's picked up. A down ball, nice diving save. Osmondson, number three, gets dug. Osmondson on the overpass attack, follows through and hits the net. So a point again to the Matadors, and their second real point. On another hitting error. Coach Beaumont on another hitting error. But they're applying pressure from the service line and setting up decent blocks, which causes errors. It's good. Just trying to piece it all together are the Matadors right now. Well, Schickling here's Hoppy out of the back row as the setter got pulled off the net. Still able to throw in that big attempt. It's a good run. Hoppy scores the point. So 23-18 now. It's incredible how different some of these teams are going to look two months from now. Yeah, there will be some different faces on each team. More names to remember for us here in the broadcast booth, but excited to see. Some of those new looks as Osmondson is able to get his first kill of the set that time on his fifth attempt. So not the best hitting percentage for Max, but that time effective. And it is set point through now a triple for block. the Ramblers. And, and that was the one time where I wouldn't have tripled. This guy just had two hitting errors. And if you're not disciplined, you're going to get a roll through ball. Very good point, Coach. That'll wrap up set number two here from the NVA event in San Bernardino. Coach Beaumont, it's been an absolute pleasure. I know you travels home, and for you guys watching, stay with us. We'll be right back after this timeout. OSIM. And welcome back in. 
to the Pierce Sports Complex here in San Bernardino, California for the final match of the NBA USA 2022 season. My name is Matt Prosser. Thanks for joining me. And a special thank you to Coach Justin Beaumont for joining me here in the broadcast booth for those first two sets. Some really good insight from the head coach of New Jersey's Team Freedom as they went 2-0 and on the weekend. And right now, Las Vegas Ramblers with a two-set to zero advantage here in the match. Winning set one, 25-17, and set two, 25-18. Quick glance at the statistics here for the Ramblers hitting at a 52% success rate. Six blocks. Meanwhile, for the Matadors, only four blocks and a 30% hitting percentage is not quite good enough to get it done. Although they did show a little bit more growth offensively with some success there in set number two, running through the middle. A couple more opportunities for Brett Massetti and Patrice to get some points, but Unfortunately, at the end of it, passing broke down a little bit and just the, too much weapons for the Ramblers. Meanwhile, for Las Vegas, eight points through the middle for Antoine Aguilar on offense. And also Jordan Hoppy, the outside hitter, 19 total points. Through two sets, he's been a very strong offensive weapon for the Ramblers. But right now, up to the Matadors to defend their home court here as we get ready to start set number three. Victor Vasquez Lopez with a float serve, and he starts it off with an ace. So good service ace from Victor Vasquez Lopez to open up set number three. Jump float serve hybrid. Going over to Max Osmondson, who has stayed in the match after replacing my broadcast partner, Nick England, when the Ramblers are not playing. Another hybrid serve to Osmondson. Schickling has to step in and pass, and it's a free ball. Kept alive. This is Wale on the left. Schickling with a dig. And Hoppy going hard angle for the point. A swing that time from Jordan Hoppy. Scoring another point for the Ramblers and bringing us level to ones. Early action, set number three. Just getting settled in here. Antoine Aguilar serving down the line, nicely passed, and Patrice goes into the middle. It's dug. Hoppy tries, but it's picked up. A jump set from the libero, roll shot. Nice dig by Andrews, and it's a free ball to the Matadors. Patrice, another opportunity. Recycled, Mather out of system. Another chance for the Matadors. And they get it that time. That's Gabriel Colon Lai with a nice swing in transition, scoring his first point of the match. Gabriel Colon Lai coming in to start set number three. That's the first time he's gotten a chance to swing for a point. There's Wale with a good jump serve. Josh Duarte with the tip over the block, but it's dug up. And Cologne Lai again goes out of bounds this time. No challenge coming. Reconfirmed from multiple pairs of eyes around the court, suggesting that the Matador coach not use that challenge. So here's the setter for the Ramblers. This is Spencer Andrews, and he serves that ball into the net. So an easy point inside out for the Matador. Still with the advantage here, three serving two. Martin Patrice, the veteran middle blocker, getting ready to serve. Osmond's in the target. Here comes Mather from the left side, and Ryan Mather going down the line seam that time for the point. Mather sitting the majority of set number two out on the sideline, but getting reinserted to start set three this time. Here's Jordan Hoppy played his college volleyball at 
Concordia University of Irvine. It was coached by Sean Patchell. And nearly an ace, but here comes a down ball. Blocked back by Duarte, but just out. So an unconventional side out that time from the Matadors. And the point being scored by Brett Massetti. Brett missed last night's match, but getting the start here tonight. Gabriel Colon Lai getting ready to jump serve. Goes down the line and it's a running set from Andrews out to Osmondson. High off the block but controlled. Colon Lai from the back row. Mather on two. Massetti goes over and that's going to be four contacts on the Matadors. The Ramblers were able to work themselves out of a non-perfect pass. And now, Josh Duarte, the middle blocker, will be serving. Wearing number 32, in honor of one Magic Johnson, his favorite basketball player. And that serve goes into the net. Service error to Josh Duarte, and the Matadors stay with that one point advantage. Five serving four, Carlos Serrano, looking over to the coaching staff for some serving guidance. Goes down the line at Osmondson. Mather on the right side, and he terminates with a big swing from Ryan Mather. Ryan Mather, born and raised in Redondo Beach, California. Played his high school volleyball at Redondo Union High School, and then went on to compete as an antelope at Grand Canyon University in Phoenix. Several years overseas, playing professionally since he Finished up his eligibility in Phoenix. There's a big jump serve this time. Nicely passed. Massetti scoring with an unconventional right side attack off the block of Osmondson. So Matador's able to work a side out there. It's now six serving five. Here's the local product, Brett Massetti. Antoine Aguilar into the middle, but it's slowed down by Patrice, and Patrice able to score another point. Matadors utilizing the sneak attack, unconventional offense so far for a couple of points here in set number three. Trying to get some momentum on their side. Bit of a pep talk going on during that second set intermission, and here comes Mather with a high ball into the block, and. Patrice pairing up with Wale that time. They both get a nice block. Able to shut down Ryan Mather there. So right now, momentum on the side of the Matadors. Massetti with another jump float serve. Passed well from Hoppy and Aguilar this time delivers on that ball and just too much heat for Serrano to handle. So a good pass results in a quick attack and a point for the Ramblers. So here's the outside hitter, Max Osmondson. Struggled at the net to finish set number three, but has stayed in. Ball goes high off the block. Mather with a good effort to get that ball up in the air, but just ricochets into the crowd. A souvenir for a fan in the stands there. So now a three-point advantage for the Matadors. The setter getting ready to serve here, Victor Vasquez Lopez. A little off-speed jump float serve, can't get past the net, so a service error to the Matador side. And now we will see Antoine Aguilar the Long Beach State alumni get ready to serve. He scored several points in both sets so far from the end line and has been very impactful from the service line this time. Patrice throws it down but just misses the sideline, so a hitting error credited to Martin Patrice. And again, we will see Antoine Aguilar go back to serve. 
Ramblers trying to go on a little bit of their own scoring run here. In the first third of the set. Outside to Cologne Lai, and he scores over the block and into area six. So Gabriel Cologne Lai getting another point, his third of the set here. Now Jordan Wale getting ready to serve for the Matadors. Good serve, nice pass. Here comes Hoppy flying in on that nice tempo set from Spencer Andrews. Too fast for the Matador block to get set. And another kill for Jordan Hoppy, the outside hitter for the Matadors. Putting it down with some authority that time. Such a fast offense, making it nearly impossible to block if you're a Matador player. And Spencer Andrews goes with the jump float serve. Right side to Cologne Lai, and Hoppy hangs in the air, throws it back down for a block, and then we find ourselves leveled at 10 points apiece again. Spencer Andrews with a good jump float serve. Into the middle, Patrice, it's Doug. Duarte has to free ball it over. Chance for the Matadors to Patrice again, and this time he scores the point. Martin Patrice showing that he still has some offense in those legs. Doing a nice job scoring for the Matador side. Quick set this time to Duarte. And the Ramblers return the favor and the quick attack. Jordan Hoppy getting ready to serve for the Ramblers now. Good serve, trouble. And that ball goes out of bounds. As Vasquez Lopez nearly comes into the scores table and breaks one of our sponsor signs. We don't want that, but a point being credited to the Ramblers. And that ball is unreturned. Sets to zero, and we will see a timeout called by the Matador side. And we'll take a quick timeout as well. Stick with us. We'll be right back after this short break. And as the players come back out onto that court after that Matador timeout, a couple of key takeaways there. Matadors have to pass, get back into their rhythm. They were passing well in set number three, being able to run quick, set their offense, but their passing has escaped them here in set number three. Behind the service pressure from this man, number 16 in white, Jordan Hoppy from the inline has been quite the weapon. What can you do out of the timeout? And it's a service ace, his second one of this run. Jordan Hoppy doubling down on that strong jump serve. And now the Ramblers have a three point advantage. Midway through set number three, searching for that elusive three set sweep and the victory here, the last match of the weekend. And it's another ace from Jordan Hoppy, this time with the off speeder. A trifecta, if you will, for Jordan Hoppy. What does he do this time? Does he go back to the power or try to disguise it with another roll shot? High toss, and he goes for it. A one-handed pass perfectly. Goes to Massetti, but is blocked back. And another attempt here. And they're able to get the side out. That time, an unconventional side out, but effective from Serrano. 
scoring that point. So the Matadors able to work themselves out of that Jordan Hoppy run, and this is Gabriel Colon lie with his own jump serve, but it goes out of bounds through the sideline, so a service error. Point going to the Rambler side as Aguilar comes back into the front row and replaces the libero, Ryan Schickling. This is Josh Duarte getting ready to jump serve. Passed up nicely. Matadors go overhead. Cologne lie a dig from Duarte. Overpass. And a chance for Wale, and he gets it out of the back row. So second opportunity leads to a point for the Matadors. There's some nice defense from the Ramblers' side, just not able to put a transition attack together. And Serrano continuing to serve now. Short jump float serve. Tight pass from Schickling. The overpass results in a point for the Matadors. Wale taking care of that one. It's now 14 serving 16. Serrano going at Hoppy. Mather from the right side, and he gets the ball to fall on the floor of the Matador side. So Ryan Mather able to earn the side out. Ramblers with a three point advantage again, 17 serving 14. Ryan Mather, one of the more dangerous servers for the Ramblers now at the end line. A couple aces throughout this match. And a big serve that time. High ball to Wale. Three-man block, and it's effective for the Ramblers. Shutting down Wale that time. So that high ball offensive temp really due to the fact of Ryan Mather's strong jump serve and the Ramblers Working hard to get three blockers up in front of him. 18-14, tense moments for the Matadors here. Jump serve goes off the tape and over. Wale out of system, roll shots it into a good dig from Schickling. Mather from the right side. He blasts the ball off of Carlos Serranos on defense. And another point for the Ramblers. Matadors have to use their second timeout as they find themselves down by five points. Stick with us, we'll be right back after this quick timeout. So the team's coming back out onto the playing surface after the Matadors decide to use their second and final timeout. Tense moments for them as they're down by five. Ramblers in the driver's seat here. Matadors must side out on this opportunity here or else maybe all she wrote. So here's Mather's jump serve. Big serve, but it goes out through the end line. So the timeout worked, effectively icing Ryan Mather, resulting in that service error. And a side out going to the Matadors. Here's Brett Massetti getting ready to serve now. Middle blocker with his jump float serve. That ball doesn't make it over the net. And an attempt that he will shortly forget about. And it's 20 serving 15, now just five points away are the Ramblers from getting a three set sweep here on this Sunday evening. Osmondson goes to Wale. Here comes a lone line down the line, Schickling with a dig. Aguilar has to just push the ball over. And Patrice goes with a quick attack in transition and gets it. So that free ball Nicely passed by the Matadors, able to go quick. And it's an effective kill for the home side here, the Inland Empire Matadors. 
Victor Vasquez Lopez, the setter. Nice jump float serve at Osmondson. Hoppy just too high to get slowed down as he blasts that ball off of the block of Gabriel Colon Lyon. Rambler is able to score, and we see a substitution now for the Matador side. 21 16 as Di Matteo replaces Colon Lyon. Also for the Ramblers, double substitution coming in as Mather gets replaced by a back row setter. Elder and also Quinn Peterson coming in for Spencer Andrews. So Ramblers now just four points away. Their best server of the night has been Antoine Aguilar. Overpass, taken care of this time from Jordan Hoppy, And the Ramblers are now three points away from finishing this match. Antoine Aguilar, the middle blocker, getting ready to serve once again. His jump float serve has been very effective this evening in getting the Matadors out of system. But here's Wale on the right. And he finds the floor inside the block. Going with that cross-court angle winner is Jordan Wale. 17 serving 22. Matadors looking to find a little magic here. See if they can climb back into this one and maybe steal set number three. Here's the jump serve, passed well. Quick attack to Duarte, gets picked up. Serrano on the outside, goes high off the block and out of bounds. So Carlos Serrano able to score the point in transition. And now the Matadors are only four points down to the Ramblers. It's 18 serving 22. Wale's jump serve goes right off of Di Matteo's head. It's a little bit, looks painful, but Di Matteo appears to be okay, other than just a little frustrated by his teammate's attempt that time, and it's now 23-18, Ramblers. Quinn Peterson now with the jump float serve. Goes over to Serrano, out of system. Wale can't get that ball over the net. And it's four contacts on the Matador side, and we've reached match point for the Ramblers. Match point now. Quinn Peterson's jump serve doesn't make it over the net, so we play on. So Matadors get a free point from that service attempt. It's 19 serving 24. This is Martin Patrice serving. Match point number two for the Matadors. Running set over to Hoppy. Dig by Patrice. And a free ball has to get pushed over. Chance for the Ramblers here. Hoppy delivers from the left side. Team in white, a three set sweep. I will go get our match MVP and come right back for that post-game interview. Stay with us. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right, well, Ramblers winning that match in a three-set sweep. I'm joined by man of the match, MVP, Jordan Hoppy. Jordan, congratulations on the win. Thank you so much. Yep. How's that feel? Feels good. Feels good. Ra got one for Rambler Nation, so feels good. So you're 2-0 on the weekend. A nice way to finish the match. Uh, you guys were really firing on all cylinders. Was that sort of the uh, emphasis of the match coming into it for your team? 
Yeah, I think uh, the only um, we need Mather and uh, Spencer, our setter, to find each other a little bit. Once they found each other, I think we went rolling from there. Um, they, I, this is our first game playing together, and they found each other, and I think the whole offense uh, benefited. Yeah, you guys really did side out at a very good percentage. As far as your block and defense go, it was pretty effective. But really, I want to talk about more Antoine Aguilar and what he was able to do from the inline from your from your team, for your team, in uh, the efforts to win that match. Yeah. No, Antoine killed it. I mean, uh, his, his serve, he contacts it so high, and um, he just – and he's getting some digs in transition too. So I, I can't say enough about Antoine and um, also our setter finding him in the front row. He he had a night, and, and, and that was good for us. So. Let's talk about your setter really fast. Spencer Andrews didn't set for you guys on Friday. You had Tanner Maxwell in town. Where did you find Spencer, and how are you able to establish that connection so effectively tonight? Yeah, so Spencer came to us a few a uh, month ago, a couple months ago, and uh, we've been playing with him in open gyms, and we're finding that connection with all the guys. And, um, yeah, it's it, it's been an easy transition for most, most of the guys. They played with him, um, except for Mather, but they found an early connection. And, um, and then, yeah, having that transition with Tanner, um, it was kind of seamless, and uh, so, yeah, it worked out. Seamless and effective, yep. right? Seamless so 2-0 on the weekend. Congratulations. That's going to wrap us up. Here from San Bernardino, the NVA USA event number one. Join us for our next event on May 6th, 7th, and 8th. That's Mother's Day weekend. Don't forget about that, Jordan. And uh, for everyone here at the NVA, thank you for watching. My broadcast partners, Nick England, Ira Thor, and Nora Chast. We appreciate you guys joining us, and we'll see you in a few more weeks. Take care, everybody.